I, as I was uh, driving this morning uh, to this wonderful auditorium, I was thinking about this event in, uh, in human terms. You know, uh, billions of people have inhabited this earth uh, over many, many thousands of years. There are hundreds upon hundreds of countries. And yet, this morning, we have found each other. So every encounter I have as mayor of this city is meaningful to me because every encounter has a purpose. It has a meaning. And so when we're dreaming of cities, when we're building cities, when we need to make them real, we need to have that human connection. When I became mayor three years ago or so, I was getting briefed by the engineering department, the planning department, and many other departments that exist in our city, and was uh, given a lot of information and statistics and raw data about our city and its place within the GTA. And... But after those meetings were finished, I had a lot more knowledge, of course, about the city, but there was still sort of a an emptiness, uh, a void. And I detected that this happened and it occurred many, many times. And so the commissioners would come in, give me the information, and of course I would appreciate it. I was a rookie mayor after all. But as they left the door, I, I said, now I have all this information, but what does it really mean when we're trying to dream when we're trying to build, and when we're trying to make a city real. What those presentations were lacking were the human connection, that sense of belonging that is uh, rooted deeply uh, within ourselves. And as we progressed as a city in the past three years, I introduced new ways of thinking about the statistics and what they all meant. And so when we're building the Vaughan Metropolitan Center, which is our downtown core, I wanted to know more about the census. I refer to this as sensory-based planning. It's important to know the square footage of a building. It's important to know the roads and how they're going to be built. It's important to know about the landscaping. It's important to know about all those things that make sense in the planning process. But what is more important is how people are going to feel. What is the human experience that will br bring connection to the citizenship? And so it is that connection that makes cities great. It's that connection that brings to the forefront the great humanity, the great connection, the great vibrancy and dynamic spirit of a city. And I submit to you that it is when good developments are rooted in kindness and generosity of spirit that they are very welcoming to people. And I will make a bet that developments in this city and in any other city in the world where they haven't worked out, they haven't worked out because they lacked that human connection. And that human connection needs to start right at the beginning, when the seeds are planted for the city's vision. People need to be engaged. People need to feel part of it. There's a sense of, of connection that defines humanity for what it really is. That's what we all seek. And cities are not exempt from that universal truth. You know, what makes us human beings essentially and gives us meaning is that sense of belonging. We all, we all need that. We all need it in our core. We need it because that's who we are. We're people that are gregarious. We want to have a sense of belonging, whether it's in a group, whether it's in a team, whether it's in your family, in your community. And I think the developments in cities that forget that very essential point risk 
building a great city. You can be an average city, a city where you build buildings, you occupy space, but you give no sense of collective purpose. Meaning and meaningful experiences are achieved when people gather together in a state of communion where we're able to share with each other our feelings, our aspirations, our fears, our, our dreams. And you know when you want to dream it and you want to build it and you want to make it real, you only make it real when people are involved in the process. City building is very much an affair of the heart. A sense of, uh, of manifesting the collective. A sense of, of promoting what is important to the self but in a manner that embraces the entire community. And so now, three years later, our conversation in council, our conversation with associations and residence organization is much more about the sensory-based planning, of engaging people to, to feel part and parcel of that city building. And so as we progress as a city and, and we, we look forward to, to the future, we need to recognize that this essential element of engaging people is extremely important. Important because lack of engagements means bringing to, to individuals a position that is not their own. People need to, to cooperate, to feel uh, a sense of, of, of belonging. It is really ingrained with uh, who we are as, as a human race. And so today as we begin to dream it, as we begin to build it, as we begin to make it real, we have to get real. We have to get real about the human condition and what it means. We have to find out why people are attracted to certain cities, to certain neighborhoods, and not others. And I submit to you, it is really about which neighborhoods connect to the heart and the essence of humanity. That's what it is. In our downtown core, I want to know, and council wants to know, how are people going to feel? What are they going to see? What are they going to touch? What are they going to hear? Why? Because that's the human experience. And are cities not a collection of human experiences that together in aggregate terms create the city spirit? And why are some cities dead and other cities alive? They are alive because they have tapped into the inner resource of the spirit of humanity, which to me represents the very best of what citizenship is truly all about. And so as we reflect upon what makes a city great, we need to engage ourselves a little bit more in this particular area of what makes the person feel comfortable. Why are some cities great at alienating people? Why are some cities evacuated? Why do people in some inner cities move to the suburbs? Because they have lost that human connection as a community. And so when you build developments rooted in love, compassion, caring, those the higher frequencies of human existence, what you're doing is you're guaranteeing yourself success. When you build developments in neighborhoods rooted and solely motivated by how can you build the cheapest building to make the quickest buck, I guarantee you that those types of roots, those type of seeds, will not bear good fruits. I know that to be true. And so for cities throughout the world, 
what we need to do is to go beyond the planning and make city development and city building people-centered. But I mean centered. Where our values, principles, and beliefs, rooted, of course, in, in goodness, in our great ability to share our blessings, our wealth, rooted in those principles that history has taught us that at any point in time in which we have deviated from these principles, chaos has occurred, you have developed cities and, and countries where social cohesion and class polarization has occurred, and the reason why that happens is because it's not rooted in the right place. And so as we move forward, as we engage uh, as people who care about building strong communities, who care about building strong cities, strong society, fairer societies, we need to give more prominence to the human condition in building our cities so that people recognize that the purpose of city building is not a self-centered concept but rather one that inspires others to get together to build something that is even better. The environmental movement of the past 50 odd years was not a movement rooted in selfishness. It was a movement rooted in something that was bigger than the self because we knew that the earth was challenged. Any movement that has been able to achieve positive ends has always been rooted in things that are good for people, that appeal to the highest values, not the lowest that embrace that which, over time, has proven to be true. And that is when people get together, pool their resources, share a common vision, great things can, in fact, achieve. And so, we will build it. We will dream it. But more important, we will make it real. Life is not, of course, you know, it doesn't come in a nice box with a bow in it. There are always challenges in building a city. But if we are rooted in that which is positive and human and appeals to those causes that make us people of great vision, people of great humanity, people of mutual respect and, and, and understanding, I think that we can make cities real. Thank you.